What's up guys? Before we jump into the video, I wanted to say something that's kinda crazy. 96% of people watching these videos, according to YouTube analytics, are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. That's kinda bad. <laughs> I'd appreciate it big time if you guys are enjoying these videos to go down below, hit that subscribe button, and come along for the ride. I make videos all about photography and camera gear every single week, so I'd appreciate it big time if you hit that subscribe button. Back to the video. So this week I was going through my Instagram feed and was thinking back to the various different lenses and different focal lengths that I've used over the past couple of years. And so after doing photography for several years now, I've kind of made my own determinations for what I think are the best focal lengths and best lenses for me. So as a result, I've landed on two different lenses that I currently use. This one right here, the Canon 50mm f1.2, as well as what you're watching me on right now, which is the Canon 15-35mm f2.8. This has probably been my setup for now the past four or five months with just these two lenses. However, these determinations and making these decisions were just kind of based on my opinions and not any sort of fact-based objective analysis. What I decided to do is take a look at all of my favorite photos and perform some sort of statistical analysis on them in order to determine what the best focal length and what the best lenses are for me. So it was really easy to find my favorite photos because my Instagram feed is full of all of my favorite photos. However, the difficult part about this was going through all of those photos and either remembering or finding what focal length I used for all of those various photos. As you can see here on this piece of paper and several pages of this notebook, I basically went through my Instagram feed and then went through my Lightroom catalog in conjunction with that in order to write down all of the various focal lengths that I used in each of those individual photos. So once I had this notebook full of all of my focal lengths for all of my photos, I took that information and then I transposed it over into Excel. The first thing that I did when I put it into Excel was I created a formula that categorized each individual focal length into its focal length category. So for example, Anything that was wider than 24 millimeters would be categorized as a ultra wide lens. Anything between 24 and 35 millimeters would be categorized as a wide lens. Anything between 35 and 70 millimeters is categorized as a normal lens. And then anything beyond 70 millimeters would be categorized as a telephoto lens. After I did this for the focal length types, I categorized each image's image type or image genre, whether it was a street photo, a cityscape photo, a landscape photo, or an adventure photo. So an adventure photo for me is something that's like a person interacting with nature or they're interacting with a landscape or something like that. It's not necessarily a portrait photo, it's not necessarily a landscape photo, but it's an adventure photo. So that's what that means if you're wondering what that category of photos is. I'll show a couple examples of what I would categorize as adventure photos. Finally, the last piece of data that I captured was whether or not these photos were taken with a prime lens or a zoom lens. This is kind of important. I'll get to that later on here in the video. All right, so now that I had all of this data collected, I sat here staring at the data and realized, wow, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with all of this raw data. I'm not a statistician. I'm not really good at Excel, but I wasn't about to spend three hours collecting all of this data and then not do anything with it. I was gonna figure this out. Quick break here. Guys, if you appreciate me digging through my Lightroom catalog and categorizing all of this data for like five solid hours in order to make this video, I'd appreciate it big time if you went down below and gave the video a thumbs up. It really helps me out, really helps the channel out, and I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Let's get into the data. What I started doing was taking all of that raw data and then creating various pivot tables in order to come up with some general insights that might be useful from this data in order to determine what the perfect lens setup is for me. And so the first pivot table that I came up with is this one right here that categorizes all of the different photography genres and what percentage of my photos landed in each of those respective genres. So as you can see here, 28% of my photos were adventure photos, 14% were cityscapes, 46% were landscapes, and 12% were street photos. So of all of that, I believe that 74% of my photos were either adventure photos or landscape photos, which means that 74% of my photos are taken out in nature, out in the wild, out doing things 
outside in general. And so this insight right here tells me that one characteristic that's likely important to me for choosing the perfect lens is having weather sealing. Because I'm gonna be outside for, according to the statistics, 74% of the photos that I take, having weather sealing and things of that nature to protect my gear from the elements because you never know what mother nature is gonna throw at you, that's something that's super important for me for my equipment. And I kind of already knew this, but according to the data, I validated that. The second pivot table that I put together was this one right here, where you can see all of the focal lengths that I've historically used on the left-hand side, as well as the count or the number of times I've used those respective focal lengths on the right-hand side. I was also able to make a nice chart for this to make the data a little bit more digestible. And as you can see by this chart is that the vast majority of photos that I take are at 50 millimeters or less, ranging from typically between 15 or 16 millimeters on the wide end all the way up to 50 millimeters. As a matter of fact, 86% of my photos were taken at 50 millimeters or less. Super interesting. But now I figured that the fact that I only currently have this lens, the 50 millimeter, as well as the 15 to 35 millimeter lens might have skewed this data a little bit because I've been limiting myself to just using these lenses. And so what I did was I created a new chart and a new pivot table that showed just the photos that I took prior to having this lens set up for the past four or five months. And that data actually showed me very, very similar things. Still in that case, 84% of my photos were taken at 50 millimeters or less. Kind of surprising and kind of shows me that my opinions on what the best lens is for me were kind of correct. But we're going to get more into this. Let's look at some more data. So the next bit of data that I looked at was the percentage of photos that I've taken with zoom lenses versus prime lenses. And I found that 57% of my photos were taken with prime lenses, whereas 43% of them were taken with zoom lenses. So currently right now, I've, as I've said, I only have these two lenses, but historically I've had a number of different zoom lenses, such as 24 to 70s, 70 to 200s, and kind of lenses all over the place. And so I wanted to see what focal lengths I'm shooting at when I have more options, when I have a zoom lens that can get me a wide range of focal lengths, what am I choosing to shoot at? So these are the number of photos that I've taken at each respective focal length when I'm using only zoom lenses. And so the numbers here are kind of interesting. Previously, when, when we looked at the combination of zooms and prime lenses, 86% of my photos were taken at 50 millimeters or less. However, when we look at only zoom lenses, only 67% of my photos were taken at 50 millimeters or less, whereas the other 33% were taken at 50 millimeters or greater, or actually not 50 millimeters or greater, but greater than 50 millimeters. So I'm definitely targeting a lot more of the telephoto focal range when I'm using zoom lenses and I have the ability to kind of zoom in and out and have the option to shoot between different things. And now this kind of makes sense because over the past couple of months, I have run into a number of situations where I was like, I really wish I had a more telephoto lens. So this data right here could potentially be showing me that there's a little bit of a gap in my lens setup because I don't have any telephoto lens option whatsoever. After looking at all of this data, it kind of validated a couple things for me, but also made me aware of something that I wasn't as aware of before. So the first thing that it taught me was that I definitely need to be focusing on lenses, like the ones that I have right now, that are weather sealed, because 74% of the images that I take are in outdoor situations, like adventure photos or landscape photos. So definitely one of the things that I want to focus on is having weather sealed lenses. Secondly, it validated the fact that I think that the setup that I have right now is really, really good for me because 86% of the photos that I take are taken at 50 millimeters, which is right here, or wider, which that's a 15 to 35 millimeter lens. So I have the majority of the photos that I take already covered with just these two lenses. However, the last thing that I realized is that there might be a little bit of a hole in my lens setup in terms of a telephoto option. I realized by looking at the photos that I took with just zoom lenses that when I have the option to shoot telephoto, I do actually shoot telephoto a pretty significant amount of the time. I do typically limit myself to not shooting telephoto just because I don't have that equipment 
seven currently at least but when i do have that option i do shoot telephoto pretty frequently and so that tells me i might be kind of missing out on a certain amount of shots when i'm out exploring and when i'm out taking photos so in terms of how i'm going to action on this data i might look into getting a lens like the 24 to 105 millimeter lens the reason that i would look at getting that is because it gives me a little bit more of a telephoto option getting me out to 105 millimeters but it's also a really nice versatile lens to help me make these videos. It's not super gigantic like a 70 to 200 lens and I don't think I shoot telephoto enough to rationalize a dedicated telephoto lens but having something that's super versatile that could help me potentially shoot these videos and create more cinematic content but also allow for me to get out to those further focal lengths to take telephoto photos that might make a little bit more sense. So Stay tuned, I might get a 24 to 105 millimeter lens, not entirely positive yet, but based on this data, it's kind of telling me that I should. Anyways guys, I thought that was a fun little exercise to do and it certainly allowed for me to validate a couple different things, but also learn a couple things that I didn't realize about the photos that I've taken in the past. But anyways guys, if you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate it big time. If you could please hit that thumbs up button down below and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I have more photo vlogs coming here in the very, very near future. Future. The weather here in upstate New York is getting much better. Finally, yesterday we had like the first 60 degree day of the year. And so I'm very excited to start getting the camper out and heading up into the mountains to do some camping and some photo vlogs. Super pumped for that and definitely stay tuned. Anyways, guys, thank you a ton for watching the video. I appreciate you all big time and I'll see you in the video next week. Peace.